Welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, we will talk about morphs. We will apply some morphs in Dash Studio. We will then try to move those morphs from Dash Studio to Character Creator 3. And in the end, we will try to export and compare the different morphs and characters in the game engine Unity. Morphs are the fundamental functions by which we shape and modify our characters, both in Dash Studio and Character Creator 3. Here in Dust Studio, if I click on my character, here on the right side under Parameters, I can find a long list of morphs. Now this is a Genesis 8 female base character, and this character comes with a number of included morphs already. However, in Dust Studio, you will have to purchase a number of morphs that are really helpful separately. For example, here this youth morph is part of a growing up package that you have to purchase. If I apply this morph, you can see the character is changed dramatically, both in size and proportions. If I go to this morph, click on the little icon, and select parameter settings. You can see the name of the morph is Youth Morph. And down here you have a list of all the different changes that it entails. This morph can include several other morphs and modifications to the character. That means that it's pretty similar to how morphs also function in character creative 3. You can apply multiple morphs to a character and then combine those morphs in a new morph. Before I can export the character, I have to apply a T pose to it. The T poses are supplied by Reillusion. If you're interested in how to find this T pose and how to apply it, I recommend you watch the uh, previous video that I created on this workflow between Dash Studio and Character Creator 3. With the pose applied, I go to File. Export, and we select Autodesk FBX, and export the character with the following FBX export options. We select FBX 2011 binary, we select morphs, and then under the export rules for morphs, we make sure that our morph is included here. If I just delete that, I can add it again, and I have to rename it to the name that was in the parameter settings. So this is called Youth Morph. And instead of baking, I just want to try whether we can actually export the morph. Export means that the character will be exported with the morph intact, so that we can make changes to this character, basically with the slider, just in a different application. And we click Accept. Now in Character Creator, it doesn't matter what you have open, because we will have to import a new character. Click on Transformer, and we select the file that we just created. For this asset import, it doesn't really matter what you select, but if you're interested in the importing process, then again, I refer to the previous video where I show all those different steps. Now that our character is imported, I will try to find our morph and apply it. Over here in the Modify panel, we select the middle icon, which is Morphs. Under Actor, I will just try to find our Youth Morph. Unfortunately, I cannot find it. The only place where we can actually find it is here on the clothing items. So for both of our shorts and our bra, we have a youth morph. And you can see, using that morph, that's exactly what we expect it to do. Because the character will be much smaller once the morph is applied, our clothing items also move down to adjust to the smaller character size. However, there's no way so far that I have found that I can also export the youth morph and apply it to the actor in here in Character Creator 3. So we have to find a different solution. Let's get back to Dash Studio. We just re-export this character. So again, we go to Export. And let's just use the same FBX file. But this time, under Morph Export Rules, instead of exporting the morph, we will just bake it. Baking means that we take the character as it is right here, with all the settings applied, so with the Youth Morph to 100. And this is how we export the character. Now we could also delete this line because the last line is final anything bake, which means anything that is not specifically mentioned before here will be baked. But I will just leave it for now. Accept and accept. Over in Character Creator 3, we go through the same steps and use a transformer to re-import our character. Again, we choose the same settings here. Now 
once our character has imported. Again, we will find no youth morph here with the actor, but instead the character will have the morph already applied. The character looks very much like the one we just exported in Death Studio, so this seems to be a success. Our next step now is to make sure that we can reuse this character or the morph that it represents in other characters later on. In order to do this, we just go to Create and we create a new morph slider. Up here, we can name the slider. And I just call it Youth Morph. The category is Body because we're affecting the whole body. And I will not give it an additional path here, but instead I will just leave everything as it is. Our Source Morph is the default morph, and the target is the character as it is right now in its youth state. And we click OK. OK, when I now search my actor for youth morph, you can see the morph shows up here. Applying it again doubles up on the morph so that doesn't make a lot of sense. Instead, we would just open a new project and discard what we have here. Now this character here can have its youth morph applied. However, if you look at this character, something is clearly wrong because it's a female shape. Instead, before we apply our youth morph, we have to reset the body. Reset all morphs. So by clicking this reset button, it is now a more neutral character base. Because the default project that opens here with a new project with character creator 3 already has morphs applied that make it look like a female body. If I now apply my youth morph, you can see the character again looks very much like the one that I just exported. This way you can now apply your youth morph every time you need it here in character creator 3. Now obviously because this Genesis 8 female character here has a number of youth morphs, for example posture and head proportion and so on, to make it look even more realistic, you could now export all of those morph sliders as well. You could either apply them individually and export them individually to get the same number of sliders also in character creator 3 to give you more freedom, or you could just apply them all at once and bake all of them and then just have one slider that combines them all here in Character Creator 3. That's up to you. And it's really just a matter of how much time and effort you want to spend. In the last step of this tutorial, I would try to export all of those morphs to Unity. With Character Creator 3, we don't have much of an option. We just export our character. So again, I set my youth morph to 100, go to File, Export, and FBX Closed Character. Under Target Tool Preset, I choose Unity. I'll leave everything else as it is and click on Export. I'll choose an FBX file, export the character. In Dash Studio, again, I have my Youth Morph applied here. And now I can export the character as FBX, as we have done before. However, in order to export this character successfully to Unity, we have to make sure that it is in its standard A pose instead of this T pose which is required by Character Creator 3. That is because this youth morph is very complex and also alters the length of the arms and the volume of the arms. And in order for this to work, we need to have our character in an A pose. So we have the character selected, we go to Edit, Figure, Clear Animation, and we just clear the figure pose. And this resets our character pose to the standard A pose. Now we can go to File, Export, and what I'll do here is I will export this character twice. Now I can either leave this as FBX 2011 binary, or I usually go with the latest version 2014 FBX binary. We select Morphs, and I want to export one version of the character where I bake the morphs, and then one where I export the morphs. So this one will be the export version. And then we repeat the process. But instead, we bake our youth morph. Now let's compare our characters in Unity. Here on the right side, we have our character creator 3 character. In the center, we have our DAS character where the morphs are being exported. And here on the left, there's the DAS character where morphs are being baked. Now, don't mind the A pose, uh, don't mind the T pose. This character is supposed to be an A pose, but because all the morphs are being baked, it doesn't really matter too much. 
So what's the difference? Here, first of all, we can see that there's a difference in hierarchies between the character created three character and the Dash Studio characters. Now, if we select the base body for this character created three character, you can see the skin mesh renderer, and here's something called blend shapes. And those blend shapes are actually what is usually referred to as morphs within character created three and Dash Studio. Actually, there's a separate menu which also calls these blend shapes here expressions in character created three. If I go back here, and I go to the second panel, which is Motion, Edit Facial, and here I have Expression and Modify, which is all the different things that are actually being exported as blend shapes. However, to this date, there is no way to enable or disable any of these individually. I assume that in future versions of Character Creator 3, we'll be able to select which ones are being exported and add our own expressions. For now, if you actually want to make changes to any of these expressions or add some new ones, you have to go to 3D Exchange, which is an additional program by Reallusion. And here, as these blend shapes, we can see there's a number of them which are really critical for lip sync. And then we also have facial expressions which are important for emotional states. We go to our Das Studio character and select the Genesis 8 female base shape. We also have blend shapes. But because we only exported one blend shape, there's really just one that we can use. Now, Das Studio also has a number of blend shapes that will help us with lip sync or with emotional expressions of our character. With Das characters, we have to select the character and all of the clothing items, and they all have the same blend shape. And that is mostly important because this blend shape really alters the, the size of our character, and we need to adjust the eyelashes and the different clothing items with the same blend shape. Now you can see this character looks identical to the other one where we baked our morph. Let's uh, forget about the, the pose, but in terms of size and proportion, those characters are identical. Now the only difference is that here with this character, we can actually change our youth morph on the fly in Unity. So you can animate this value, or you can really provide a slider in Unity as well to change that. So if you're planning, for example, to have a character creator no pun intended, but an actual way for your user, for your gamer to adjust their character in your game, then you will use those kind of blend shapes and really have to export them with Dash Studio. And there it is really useful that you can really choose which blend shapes you want to export from Dash Studio to Unity. I'm hoping that Reillusion will match this feature with Character Creator 3 and in the future allow us to also export all the different morphs that we apply and let them be usable in Unity because it's a really powerful feature changing your character dramatically in Unity just with the slider by using blend shapes. If you have any questions about morphs or blend shapes or the whole export process between Dust Studio, Character Creator 3 and Unity, then please let me know in the comments below. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.